Welcome to Introduction to Accounting, Preparing for a User's Perspective. Liquidity Ratios. Current Ratio. In a prior topic, you learned that classified balance sheets classify assets and liabilities based on their liquidity, with the most liquid assets and the most pressing liabilities placed at the top of the respective account type. Users use classified and comparative balance sheets to compute important liquidity and solvency ratios. The liquidity ratios to be discussed in this topic are listed below. Current ratio, quick ratio, working capital, cash conversion cycle. Liquidity ratios focus on assessing the company's ability to pay off its current liabilities as they come due within the next year. The solvency ratios to be discussed in the next topic are listed below. Debt to equity ratio, debt to assets ratio. Solvency ratios focus on assessing the company's ability to pay off all their current and non-current liabilities as they come due. When companies are unable to make timely payments, they tend to be poor credit risk as well as poor investments. In fact, many companies have gone out of business not because they had a bad idea, but because they ran out of cash. In other words, their cash inflows did not properly match their cash outflows. Such companies were illiquid and or were insolvent. Liquidity ratios, current ratio. The current ratio is a type of liquidity ratio. It helps indicate whether a company's current assets are sufficiently large to pay off its current liabilities when they come due. The current ratio is computed as current assets divided by current liabilities. Let's use the following comparative classified balance sheet for liquid accounting company, LAC, below to compute its current ratio and see what it reveals. LAC's current ratio as of December 31st, 20X1 of 2.13 is computed as follows. Total current assets, $49,000 divided by total current liabilities, $23,000 equals 2.13. Its 20X2 ratio is 2.82 computed as follows. Total current assets of $48,000 divided by total current liabilities of $17,000 equals 2.82. LAC's current ratio of 2.82 indicates that it has $2.82 of current assets to pay off every $1 of current liabilities coming due within the next year, whereas in the prior year it had only $2.13 of current assets for every $1 of current liability. Because LAC's current ratio has increased, it now appears to be more liquid. The following two tricks may help you remember how to compute and interpret the current ratio. Coverage. The current ratio indicates how a company's current assets cover its current liabilities. That is why current assets are placed on the top of current liabilities, i.e. current assets divided by current liabilities, in the ratio so that they can cover them. Current. Both the numerator, current assets, and the denominator, current liabilities, start with the word current. Hopefully these two little tricks will help you remember how to calculate and interpret the current ratio. Liquidity ratios. What does the current ratio tell us and what does it not tell us? Some analysts interpret current ratios of two or above as indicating that a company is reasonably liquid and interpret current ratios of less than one as indicating that the company is illiquid. However, be careful because even if a company's current ratio is greater than two, the company may still not be very liquid as the following discussion will illustrate. The math in the current ratio assumes that current assets will be converted into cash and current liabilities will be paid with cash evenly over the whole year. The problem is that a company's cash collections and cash payments will not always be evenly distributed throughout a year, thus creating cash flow timing differences that can create unforeseen cash flow difficulties. In the real world, it is possible that even though a company's current ratio is greater than two, indicating that it's probably liquid, its current liabilities could actually come due faster than it is able to convert its current assets into cash to pay them. For example, let's assume we have no cash inflows in January, but we have to pay our current liabilities in January, resulting in an outflow. We had cash of $8 to start the month with, but then we had a cash outflow of $23 with no inflows. This would put us in a cash deficiency position. Let's assume that in February we didn't collect anything more and didn't have to pay any more. We're still in that deficiency position. March the same. But then finally in April we collect the $41 of our accounts receivable and inventory. 
that finally puts us into the positive cash position that our current ratio indicated would happen. The problem was the outflows were much earlier than the inflows, creating a cash deficiency position for three months. One of the chief financial officer's CFO's responsibilities is to recognize future cash flow deficiencies and put plans in place to avoid them. Here are just some of the many steps that LAC's CFO could have taken to avoid the noted cash deficiency. Open a bank line of credit to provide at least $15,000 in short-term financing. Sell some of LAC's long-term assets for cash, especially if they're not being used to generate income. Renegotiate payment terms with suppliers to allow later payments, even if he has to pay a small late payment penalty. Provide customers a 2% discount if they pay their bills within 10 days. 210 net 30. Obtain a cash infusion from LAC's owners in exchange for additional equity. Good CFOs must be able to predict their company's future cash flow difficulties and put effective plans in place to avoid them. On the other hand, a company's cash flows can sometimes result in temporary cash flow surpluses. For example, let's assume that in January, the company is able to collect all of its inventory and receivables, thus bringing in $41 of cash. And let's assume that they don't pay their accounts payable until much later. This would result in a cash surplus, or a cash ending balance of $49. In February, no inflows and no outflows. We stay with $49. Same thing in March. But then finally in April, we make the payment for the accounts payable, thus dropping our ending cash balance down to $26. This surplus period of $49 was not predicted by the current ratio because it assumes that the assets are received and converted into cash evenly with the liabilities. In this example, the CFO should have predicted this cash flow surplus in advance and made appropriate plans on how best to use the excess cash until it was finally needed to pay off its current liabilities in April. Those plans could include Placing the excess cash in a savings account or buying a two or a three month certificate of deposit that pays higher interest. Investing the cash in short term marketable securities. Paying current liabilities off early within 10 days to receive a cash discount of 2% or more. There are many cash management options available to a CFO, but it is essential that a CFO be able to foresee cash flow deficiencies and surpluses before they happen. Another caution about the current ratio and other ratios is that you should be careful to not evaluate a company's ratios in a vacuum. For example, an analyst can gain better insights into a company's current ratio if it is compared to the same company's current ratio from the prior year, or if its current ratio is compared to other companies in the same industry for the same year. Various free websites exist that provide key ratios by form of organization by industry. For example, I use the bizstats.com website to obtain the following industry financial ratios table for the U.S. dairy products industry. If LAC were in the dairy products industry, and if this were a table for 2000x2, we would recognize that LAC is much more liquid than the average in the industry because LAC's current ratio is 2.82, whereas the industry average is only 0.71. Source for this is the bizstats.com website. If you want to learn how to pull up similar industry ratios on your own, please watch the following short video. Please stop now and take the quiz on the current ratio. After you've completed the current ratio quiz, please move on to the next liquidity ratios topic covering the quick ratio, working capital, and the cash conversion cycle.